In New Jersey, there lurks a strange monster that terrorizes anyone who ventures deep enough into the forests of the Pine Barrens. I've driven through the pines a few times, but not with the top down. <laughs> no way. Anything could get you. Beware of the Jersey Devil. God almighty, did you, is that, was that running? Something just ran across the road. <laughs> To most people, New Jersey is Atlantic City casinos, the beaches of Cape May, lush national parks, and the backdrop for the legendary television series, The Sopranos. But this beautiful state and its rich history hide a secret, one that terrorizes some and amuses others, the Jersey Devil. Jerry Plameri is among those who fear the Jersey Devil. It was like 1964. And everybody went down the shore. Everyone, everybody went to Seaside. And um, we were on our way home from the shore, going through the pines. And we had a convertible with the top down. And all of a sudden, I heard this blood-curdling scream. This isn't normal. This wasn't human. I looked over in the trees, and there was these lights, like two red lights like this. And it seemed to be something like swinging from tree to tree. I guess maybe about two minutes later, all of a sudden, this thing flies in front of us. It was like six feet in front of us. And thank God, because we would have hit it. If he'd have came closer, we would, we would have ran right into him. But he, and he just stood there looking at us. I mean, we just, we sat like this. He stared at us looking mean. And I'm thinking, he's going he's gonna to kill us. And we couldn't move. We couldn't even back the car up. We were too scared to do anything. We just, three of us just stared at each other. It was weird. It was really weird. Most people laugh or give me a look like, yeah, right. And three of my girlfriends in Iceland, I told about it, and they all just looked at me. One said, oh, I've heard about it, but, and I says, no, it's real. She didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't care if you don't believe me. I believe my mother. Leeds Point in Galloway County is considered the birthplace of the Jersey Devil. It's here that the legend of the monster is taken most seriously, and the mayor, Don Purdy, is particularly proud of their most famous resident. I own a, a towing company with six tow trucks, and I own a body shop, and I own an auto repair center, and then I am the mayor of the town. I don't think that we've ever put a number on the amount of people that travel to Galloway Township or Leeds Point to find the, uh, or search of the Jersey Devil. But I'm sure there's a lot that we don't know. You know from going around the state of New Jersey at different stories that you've heard, but it all comes back to here. You know, it all this is it, Galloway Township is the home of the Jersey Devil. Well, Galloway's pretty unique. Galloway Township is uh, the largest municipality in the state of New Jersey, depends on who's measuring it. Uh, it's uh, 114 square miles. Uh, a lot of people measure some of the wetlands and so forth. Um, it's a large community. It's really close to um, Atlantic City. Ken Suey is one of our great historians of uh, Galloway Township. And Ken is a great guy in knowing the history of um, not only Galloway Township, but Leeds Point, because that's where Ken lives. Um, and, and I think that uh, there's history there, and I think as long as there's history, it will live. I believe that. Uh, you are in uh, Galloway Township uh, Historical Society Library. We collect uh, anything and everything to do with primarily Galloway Township, but we also have an Atlantic City room, and anything in the area of historical value we assemble and uh, record, keep records on it, and keep it for posterity. 
This small village of a few hundred souls was named after its founder, Daniel Leeds, a name as famous as it is common among locals. There is but one Leeds family that was established in South Jersey. There was uh, some other ones in New England, but the Leeds family that established in New Jersey went ahead, proceeded. The first mayor of Atlantic City was uh, Leeds. Ch Chalky Leeds. Chalky Leeds. Yeah. Mayor of uh, Galloway Township has been a Leeds at one point in time. Yeah, Harry. Yeah, Harry Leeds. Harry Leeds. And I'm married to a Leeds. <laughs> But the most famous of the Leeds is Jean, or as she's known here, Mother Leeds. This mother of 13 children influenced New Jersey for centuries, beginning in 1735. It seems that Jane Leeds and her husband Daniel lived in a cabin at the edge of a great swamp along the Mullica River. Now, folks in these parts say that it was a strange family, an unusual family. Some people even said that Jane Leeds was a witch. One night, she learned that she was pregnant with her 13th child. And in a moment of understandable weakness, she said, as she was saying her prayers, Lord, let this one not be a child. Let this one be a devil. He was about eight feet tall and the, like the head of a horse. And he looked angry and he had horns. And long, his long arms had claws on the ends of it. You know, like it would could really scratch you. The body was like all decrepit, sort of like body of a horse, but, but not beautiful and smooth like a horse would be. And then like when, you know when a horse is up on, on two legs and they're, they, they're going with their paws like this? The legs in the back are all crooked. Well, this is what he do, he was, and he was walking on them like that, with hooves. And I'm telling you, I thought I was crazy. I didn't think I really saw this. And um, no sooner did he just stare at us like that for about two minutes, but two minutes is long when you're scared. Um, he just sprouted his wings like this, which were humongous, they were really big, and just took off into the forest. Thank you for not killing me, seriously because I could have been dead. People who claim to have seen the Jersey Devil describe it as having a dog or horse's head, horns, a body like a kangaroo's, broad wings, a reptile's tail, hooves, and razor-sharp claws. Someday in the late fall, listen carefully when you hear the wind coming off the ocean through the pines. It almost seems like someone is trying to tell us something, possibly someone's name. Oh, Mother Leeds. Oh, Mother Leeds. But how does a woman from America's colonial era give birth to the devil? Well, we do know that it was an unusual family. It was a very large family. It had 12 children. And Jane Leeds, her problem was not really with her husband. Daniel, he was a good hunter, an excellent fisherman, a decent gardener. There was always food on the table. That wasn't the problem. The problem was that Daniel Leeds didn't take very much interest in the children. And so Jane Leeds was left with the cleaning, the cooking, the laundry, chopping wood, picking things up, putting things away. To tell the truth, she was at her wit's end. She was frustrated on that frightful night in February of 1735, when Mother Leeds' 13th child was born. It started out a perfectly healthy, normal, little baby boy with blonde hair and blue eyes, but then something went terribly wrong. My name is Rochelle Christopher. I am an independent historian with Victorian Vanities. My organization teaches people about American history. And one of the things we look at generally 
in the show that I do on Weird New Jersey is the New Jersey Devil. And I did see it once. I'd been driving for a couple of hours. I was between Cape May and Stone Harbor, and it jumped out in the road. And of course, it then flew away. Mother Leeds gave birth. The devil apparently was a beautiful baby boy. Soon after he was born, he grew talons and horns and wings unfurled from his back and very long legs. He went into the next room where the midwives were and his father killed his father and mother, killed other children cowering in the corner, um, killed his mother and then flew up the chimney leaving all of this rubble behind. The tranquility of Leeds Point residents is sometimes disturbed by curious travelers looking for the very source of the Jersey Devil legend. The first stop on their macabre pilgrimage? A house built on the ruins of the legendary residence of Jane Leeds. There are cults who believe in the New Jersey Devil, and some people believe this is the neighborhood, this is the house. They're going to threaten, they're gonna, they want what they want, which is to burn down the house if they can't take pictures, to do seances to conjure it up, but they're looking for a connection to the devil, which this lady who owns the house claims is not. There is nearby a cemetery. It's called Leeds Point Community Cemetery, and it has maybe about 40 or 50 stones in it. And there were kids from Stockton, students from Stockton University, and they did a seance up there, hoping to conjure up something. History and folklore mingle in the legendary stories of the Jersey Devil. One of the most famous of them features none other than Napoleon's brother, Joseph Bonaparte. There's a wonderful story about Joseph Bonaparte, the, um, the older brother of Napoleon, who lived in Philadelphia while he was waiting for his house to be built in Mount Holly. And um, he had an encounter with the New Jersey Devil. And apparently he looked at it with his gun and the New Jersey Devil looked at him and they both looked at each other and finally the devil flew away. Well, Joseph Bonaparte swore that he was going to find the devil and bring it home as a trophy. Of course, he never saw it again. But it was in 1909, during the week of January 16th to 22nd, that the Jersey Devil made its most famous appearance, throwing the entire country into panic. Monster sightings occurred in Atlantic City, Philadelphia, and outside New York City. The newspapers picked up the story, and the Philadelphia Zoo even offered $10,000 for his capture. 1909, the week when everybody said they saw it. That was the week when the New Jersey Devil was seen all over southern New Jersey, but it flew away. It was seen in Bridgeton, and it flew away. It was seen by a group of, of people on a trolley car, in Camden and it flew away. And that seems to be the story. They saw it and it flew away. And everyone on the trolley car said they saw it. It made an appearance on a rooftop. Adults in Philadelphia and Camden were afraid to send their children to school because they were afraid the New Jersey Devil was going to make its appearance. Paul Evans Peterson Jr. is one of those who believes in the legend of the Jersey Devil. He devotes his free time to organizing monster hunts and writing songs about New Jersey and its history. He even wrote a book, The Legendary Pine Barrens, New Tales from Old Haunts. Hey, my name is Paul Evans Pedersen, Jr. I am a singer, songwriter, author, and jewelry maker. And I live here in the Pine Barrens of South Jersey. And I've seen the Jersey Devil. When Jerry Plumeri saw an ad in the local newspaper announcing a conference hosted by Paul Evans Peterson, she jumped at the opportunity to share her terrifying encounter in the summer of 64. I kind of like put it in the, 
in the back of my mind because everybody thought I was nuts. So I ignored it. And it now mind you, years and years are gone by. This was 1964 when I saw in the newspaper uh, they're having this this talk at the at the library. Paul Peterson is going to um, he writes books about the Jersey Devil. And I said, you know what? I got to go see this. I really there's something telling me to go. And I sat there in the second row because I knew I was going to talk to him. And I'm in the second row and he's talking. I was mesmerized by his talking because he, was, he saw the Jersey Devil five times. And, I, and he said, has anybody seen the Jersey Devil? So I got, I went like this real meek because I'm thinking, these people are going to think I'm nuts. But they, you could hear a pin drop in the room. You've made this your life. Thing. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. I never saw his face. I saw it hopping away from me. Ooh. And I heard it coming up my cellar steps and banging on the door. But never came face to never face. Never came face to face with it. Nope. I'm asking me. I'll write a book called I Shook Hands with the Jersey Devil. That'd be great. I'd love that. Me too. Oh I God. shook claws with the Jersey <laughs> Devil. <laughs> If the Jersey Devil was born in Leeds Point, he hides in the forests of Pine Barrens. Today, Jerry Plumeri and Paul Evans Peterson meet at the visitor center of the Pine Barrens Preservation Alliance on the edge of the forest where the monster last appeared. Does it, he, no, do you want me to tell the truth? He doesn't look anything like what I saw. What I saw was about this tall, but these are like real hands. He didn't have real hands, they were claws. And the legs didn't know nothing like this. It was like a horse when it was standing up on on, on its hind legs, where the, the back legs are bent, and he had hooves, which he has hooves, and a long tail. But um, a head of a horse, but this, this looks too gentle. He didn't look gentle, he had red lights for his eyes and horns. So a lot of people down through the years have seen it and, uh, and, and have shot at it. I have a friend of mine that shot at it three times. See, you don't, you don't hear about it for a long, long time. Right. Well, they you say that any time you see a lot, of, a lot of sightings of the Jersey Devil, yeah. it means a war is coming. One of the best ways to protect yourself from the Jersey Devil is you got to find these tracks. And this is a story that goes back to me and my grandkids, or my kids when my kids were little. And I would tell them, you got to get a little shovel and dig the track real carefully and put it into a glass jar and screw the lid on it and keep that jar under your bed. <laughs> and as long as you keep that track in a jar under your bed, the Jersey Devil will never hurt you. Wow. I don't think we're all nuts in Jersey that Yeah, no, seriously, they do. Between the Jersey Devil and all the people in the malls, we are crazy. Right, really, when you come down to it, the Jersey Devil. Now, where do you hear that? Any, any other state? Yeah. All the stories that have ever been told about the Jersey Devil are born right there. Yep. That's it. That's where it all comes from. The Pine Barrens is 4,500 square kilometers or 1,700 square miles of dense forest bordering the Atlantic coast south of the state of New Jersey. In 1978, it became the first nature reserve protected by the U.S. government. People come here to get lost in nature. Some come to chase monsters. It is said that come nightfall, campers often find themselves more than a little unnerved. Hi, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go through the uh like the heart of the Pine Barrens. And we're going to be looking for uh, Jersey Devil tracks. And uh, if we can, you know, you never know, we might see something. Uh, the correct behavior is just to pay a close attention to what's going on in the woods, uh, not disturbing anything, because there's like 30 different kinds of plants that grow there and nowhere else. 
that are on the endangered uh, species lists. Uh, there's a lot of animals on the same list, endangered species. And we're just going to watch the woods and see what comes out of it. And if we see the Jersey Devil, this has a really good reverse gear. And we'll be putting it in reverse and getting away from it. Welcome to New Jersey. When I go hunting for the Jersey Devil, I like to go either right in this area, back along the Mullica River, or down in Cumberland County, which is closer to the Delaware Bay than it is to the Atlantic Ocean. That's number one, that's why I keep a compass in the car. But as long as I know where the sun is, I'm usually pretty good about not getting lost. But I've been back here before and it, it gets very frustrating if you don't know where you are. And you can get yourself really lost back here. And I mean for a whole day, maybe. And if it gets dark, forget about it. If you don't know what the hell phase the moon's in, <laughs> you're gonna stay out there. I love it out here. This place is my heart, man, it really is. And ever since, ever since I've been a little kid, I just keep coming back out here and I've you know, tried to learn everything I can about all the different species of plants and animals and, and about the people. It's just, it's just a really special place. The earth in the Pine Barrens is sandy, which caused many European settlers to leave the area in search of more fertile land. Since then, this vast territory, which occupies nearly a quarter of the state of New Jersey, has been considered an inhospitable land. But this is a mistake, according to historian Kenneth Suey. This would have been a paradise for people that were establishing uh, housing first coming down. I have fuel, I have fire, I have water, I have fish in the water, I have food. I have cranberries that can grow here. They, they had the necessities of life. I, I don't consider us barren at all. Uh, just look around you. Do you see anything barren about, about where we're at? I mean, water lilies, uh, holly, magnolias. We have it all. Yeah? We're only going to go a little further. It is here that the Jersey Devil has made his home. The monster has been known to take long drinks from the deserted swamps of the Pine Barrens. Another favorite haunt of the Jersey Devil, the ghost town of Batstow. This uninhabited village dates from 1766, almost 30 years after the birth of the monster. The Jersey Devil was, has been seen here through the years. Um, this village was started in the 1700s, and it was started as a uh, ironworks. And they made stuff, iron stuff, for the colonists, and during the Revolutionary War, they made munitions and stuff for the uh, for the Revolutionary War fighters. And uh, after that, in the 1800s, it was turned into a glass works, and they made window glass, what they call window light. And uh, the state of New Jersey has preserved it, and it looks pretty much like it did uh, back in that time. Over the years, the Jersey Devil's been seen here several times, re reported seen here several times by, you know, residents, workers. And this is the area where the sightings are very prevalent. It's right around here, because we're not that far from the Back Bays. The Batstow River's right through here. Uh, Batstow Lake is right over there. And it seems that the Jersey Devil prefers areas where there's water. So in areas like this, this is, you know, where you're gonna see it. Yeah, he's quiet until he starts screaming at people. And that's, that's mainly what you hear about, is people hear it. They hear this ungodly scream that they can't you know, put their finger on what kind of animal they've ever heard in their life made that scream. And a lot of your quote unquote sightings are actually hearings, you know, people that have heard whatever this thing is. 
And uh, now we're going to go back into uh, Bulltown Road, which is another kind of like a village back here where it's been seen a lot. So. If you fish where there ain't no fish, you ain't going to catch them. If you go looking for the Jersey Devil where he ain't going to be that day, you ain't going to see it. <laughs> How did the Pine Barrens become synonymous with fear and danger in the minds of the residents of New Jersey? Over the centuries, some people have had a personal interest in cultivating the mystery of the forest. The Pine Barrens, because it's so uh, sparsely populated, um, is a good place if you want to uh, carry on illegal activities, because who's going to see you? Um, so, for example, in the early days of the Republic, um, Alexander Hamilton had the idea to collect duties at the ports. So ships coming from Europe might go to New York or Philadelphia, and when they pull in, the tax collector was there to collect the customs duty. But let's say you don't want to pay the taxes. Well, maybe you could take your ship to Barnegat Bay or to Tuckerton and come ashore with the goods loaded onto Conestoga wagons, which could take the goods to New York and Philadelphia, you would increase your profits because you didn't have to pay the taxes. Now, naturally, you don't want revenue officers coming around. And so you tell people the story of the Jersey Devil. You know, when outsiders come around into the woods, they often don't come out. And it was a, it was a mode of intimidation. Small, sandy roads crisscross the Pine Barrens. In New Jersey, they are called sugar sand roads. And of course, to venture on them increases your chance of coming face to face with the Jersey Devil. Did you, is that, was that running? Oh man, something just ran across the road. This is, this is where, if you're gonna see something, this is where you're gonna see it. The Jersey Devil has been seen, or reported, reportedly seen, and this is one of the main roads that they have the Jersey Devil hunts on. Because this is pretty much in the middle of the Pine Barrens right here. This is smack dab in the middle of it. driven through the pines a few times, but not with the top down. <laughs> no way. No. <sighs> Anything can get you. Anything can drop out from the trees. Even today, many people, sane, trustworthy people, say they believe in the existence of the Jersey Devil. There have been over 2,000 reported sightings, but what did these people really see? A lot of people have said they've seen it. Could be anything. Could be drunk, could be tired, could be they want attention, could be they saw something. I can tell you that I don't believe in it, but when I drive through the Pine Barrens at night, there is something, it is creepy, and I don't know what it is. There are um, explanations, uh, and uh, many times um, my colleagues, fellow scholars, have come up with hypotheses to explain away uh, what people uh, s saw, but they think they saw the Jersey Devil, but it was really something else. One is um, like the fruit bat, because bat-like wings, okay, we're, we're halfway there, and it's night, and it's in the woods, and you're not familiar with wildlife, and you're scared, 
and you, you know the story already, well, the Jersey Devil pops into your mind as an explanation for what you saw. So that would be one possibility. Um, far more uh, plausible is the Great Horned Owl. The, the Great Horned Owl has quite a wingspan and makes clicking noises and coming at you at night in the woods could be frightening enough. And again, if you already know the story of the Jersey Devil, you might mistake the Great Horned Owl for the Jersey Devil. I have uh, fished, uh, trapped, and uh, hunted for most of my life. I've been out in the bays, in the woods, in the swamps, and every hour of the day and night, I've heard some really strange noises, which I have to attribute to being animal noises of one type or another. Uh, but I do not believe that there's a Jersey Devil. I believe it is a legend. It's really kind of a lousy feeling when you're trying to tell somebody something and they're laughing at you. It's supernatural. And people, a lot of people are interested in that. I know I am. I mean, I watch some crazy shows, you know, thriller and all that. I watch some crazy shows, but this wasn't, this wasn't a show. This was true. So I don't see how they can't believe when there's people like me, and I know there's other people that's seen them. And I'm telling you word for word, and I never changed my story when I told it to Paul. I've never swayed from the story. It's a truth. I'm not making it up. But like, a, like I said, a couple of my friends think I'm off, off my rocker. They think I'm making it up for attention. No way. The last stop on the trail of the Jersey Devil, the Washington Tavern the only remnant of a village long gone. This is as far as we'll go. The ruins are right over there. This is the site of the Washington Tavern. And this is one of the best places, if you listen real close, you will see how absolutely dead quiet it is. You can see how old this, this growth in here is. This has been here a long, long time. And it's amazing, any time of year you come here, it's always this quiet. It's like everything else is afraid to live around here. And that's, that's part of the legend, that uh, at the birthplace of the Jersey Devil, no animal, birds, anything. It's very strange, very strange. Gives you a chill every time you come down here, and I've been coming down here for a long while. There's basically <clears throat> a clearing over here. The Jersey Devil has been sighted a lot here. And it was one of the hangouts of Joe Moliner, one of the pine robbers. And like I said, this is all that's left. But this was a tavern uh, built out here in the middle of nowheres now. But back in the day, this was quite the place to be. And now it's just a ghost town. In the time when these ruins were a village, legends about monsters had significant resonance in the community. Ever since the 20th century, um, there have been forces working against these traditional stories. I mean, in, in my romantic imagination, I can see, say, in the 19th century, uh, the village storyteller uh, sitting around the potbelly stove in the general store, regaling people with stories, and people with fiddles and banjos having a Saturday night dance. In the old days, people made their own entertainment. 
They made their own music, they told their own stories. Our culture doesn't really support leisurely storytelling anymore. And that's kind of like the, the foundation and the floor of what it went across. And that was, the, that was the basement of it. This all used to be brick, and it's disappearing. So even just, even just standing here, you gotta wonder. It really feels like you're being watched. The story of the Jersey Devil has been passed down for three centuries, and along the way it has undergone some changes. The commercialization of the Jersey Devil was inevitable, but it had some positive and some negative consequences according to folklorist Angus Gillespie. The traditional stories of the Jersey Devil, and I think this is something that's very hard for contemporary audiences to understand, in the original versions, in the, among the old families of South Jersey, this is an awesome, fearsome, nasty, dangerous creature who's said to have slit the throats of babies in their cribs. Uh, this is a creature that's monstrous and evil. Since we have, for the last several years, this hockey team called the New Jersey Devils, there's a lot of name recognition. I mean, people, almost worldwide, uh, certainly in North America, uh, recognize the name. But they don't really know the story. Uh, and the other problem is, over time, and particularly in places like Smithville, which is very close to Leeds Point, you have like souvenir shops selling uh, t-shirts, uh, shot glasses, uh, pennants, uh, postcards, and, and the usual representation is of the uh, Jersey Devil as a kind of a cartoon character who's kind of cute. Uh, and um, from my point of view, I mean, that's, that's all wrong. I mean, this is not clever or cute or cartoon-like. This is awesome and scary and frightful. Once feared, today the Jersey Devil is celebrated. Even New Jersey native Bruce Springsteen has sung about the devil. Everyone embraces the maiden New Jersey legend, and everyone has their story to tell. And you know, as a kid riding a bike down there one time, my dogs were with me, the dirt road back there at King's Highway, and something came out of the woods, made a noise, my dogs like chased it through the woods, they were barking and all this stuff. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what it was this day. But I've hunted all around here all my life. And you just hear all the Jersey Devil stories, and then I'd be in the woods, you'd hear some screaming, people said, ah, it's just a fox. But I don't know what it was. I'm 49, and I've been told this stuff all my, since I was little. Who knows if it's true? I mean, I, I sort of believe it, it's like Bigfoot. I believe in Bigfoot. As a kid, I saw it as real. As a kid, I certainly saw it as real, especially going to, you go to the local library and they have all the, uh, the old Jersey Devil documentaries, like, you know, oh, we saw something rustling in the woods, you know. It's, <laughs> yeah. I, I loved it, I, I loved it. You know, just having that, that bit of imagination to what might be lurking in the woods, and there's, there's plenty of woods for it to lurk in, too. I talk about it all the time. I talk about it anybody that'll listen, pretty much. <laughs> so, well, I have plenty of relatives that, that have claimed that they've heard mostly heard the Jersey Devil, something rustling in the bushes. I think it's usually probably just a deer screaming, but I like to believe them when they say they heard it. But even those who believe in the monster don't necessarily think it's dangerous or means to harm anyone. I just think he's scared and I think he's lost yeah. and doesn't know where he belongs. Sure. And maybe he's 
he just wants to reach out, but everybody's so scared of him because he looks like what people would call a freak, not to be mean, but he, he doesn't look normal and people get scared of that. And he's become the devil. If he was the devil, he would have killed people. Yeah. He would have attacked people. So he's, I wouldn't, I think devil's the wrong word for him. I think he's just one of our many wonderful people to add to Jersey. I asked Paul how in the world this thing is still alive if it was born in the 1700s. Because let's face it, come on, that's a long time ago. And he says it reinvents itself. The first thing I said, well, who does he mate with? I mean, there's no other monsters. Who does he mate with? But the thing is, it's there. It's really there. But he doesn't hurt anybody. That's, that's the main thing. I think that, that's pretty cool. He's, he's, he's sort of like in limbo. He's, he's ro roaming around and has no place to go. As a professional folklorist, it's my job to be a professional agnostic. Uh, I don't want to be too skeptical, and I don't want to be too gullible. Uh, besides, when I'm interviewing people, I have to show respect. And um, if somebody believes in the Jersey Devil, I'm not going to disabuse them of that. Uh, I want to draw them out. Um, and I think um, it's easy enough to find skeptics. It's harder to find true believers. And it's harder yet to find a true believer who will go public with her story. We didn't see him, and it's, it's, you know, there's been a lot of people down through the years that go on Jersey Devil hunts, and with all kinds of equipment, with all kinds of detectors and electronic stuff, and this, that, and the other thing, and that's not usually when it happens. You know, hopefully we could have had it happen, but uh, it didn't. Of course, the day's not over yet. You never know. It's a long ride back to Hamilton. But um, usually it's, it's somebody down here fishing or hunting or just going for a walk and the thing will come out and stand in front of them or or you know jump in front of its car and that's that's when you that's when it's seen it's at, it's at the strangest times or the most unexpected times and and anytime you come to this part of south jersey could be the time you see it and every time i come down here fishing or just taking a ride with a wife and taking some pictures that could be the time that you look right into its eyes and it's Jersey Devil. In the backwater marshes where the cranberries grow the water takes on the color wine as it flows and every evening the sun's fire drowns in the bay and all the creatures that live here they have their own special way and I swear it's true these pine barren blue the folks that live in the barren they have a story they tell They say the old leads woman She bore a child from hell The night he's born he took wings on And flew out into the night They say you still hear him screaming When the conditions are right And I swear it's true Pine Baron Blue. Every time I go down there, I may not say anything to anybody else, but in my head, I'm thinking. I'm You're looking, looking in the trees. I'm looking in the trees. I'm, uh, you know, even when I'm driving, I'm looking just to make sure because you, you just never know. You don't know. I think it has to do with the weirdness that is New Jersey. If you're at all interested in the weird. New Jersey is probably the home of the weird. The next time you go into the woods late at night, take care. And when you hear the sudden crack of a twig behind you, 
Beware. Beware of the Jersey Devil.